are you? How is yours? Oh, great. Three and a half. Three and a, half. a terror. <laughs> afraid of nothing, which is an issue. Uh, you know, let's talk about what was in the news this weekend. Penelope Leach was here, as you know. Yeah, uh, wonderful, and wonderful lady. She is. She is kind of... Um, She's Britain's answer to you, I suppose. <laughs> well, well, but she does very good. She said that no child under one year should be in a daycare center. Mm. And yet, for so many parents, there is no choice. Mm -mm. What's your feeling? Well, I think, th you know, things that might work in England don't necessarily work in the USA. And uh, centers do something very special for kids. They, they give them cushions. A single parent taking care of other people's children is, can be wonderful, but she can also be disastrous. And the trouble is that a parent who's working doesn't have a chance to go and see what it's like in that home. So uh, I think if you found a wonderful home, that would be ideal. Or a home where, where one woman takes one, care of several children. Yeah. Well, what's wrong with a center where several educated young women or men take care of children? If it's good, nothing's wrong with it. If, if it's not, it can be disastrous. So, so what's the criteria? What, what should we look for? Quality. And I would look for a place that's safe, that's clean, that you know somebody cares about children, that has a ratio of not more than one adult, I mean, not more than three or four at most infants to, a, to one adult, and toddlers not more than five. And then I'd also look for one other thing, and t Penny doesn't talk about this. If a baby looks at you like this and make, you know, and tries to make a bid for your attention, you want to see that person look back and say, aren't you great? Okay, so interaction with the child more than Absolutely. with you, the parent. You should look for that, I suppose, in any daycare provider, even one that you have in your home oh, or anytime. anyone, right? I would always look for that. And if a child comes up and puts its hand on your leg, you want somebody who'll put their hand back and just say it's okay and go on talking. You were telling me that 2020 is about to do a piece on a southern daycare center mm -hmm. that sounds pretty horrific. Right. What was the story there? Well, uh, I think it's night, Nightline or something like that. But anyway, uh, they, they went down and filmed a daycare center in the South. And, you know, this is what most people are at the mercy of. And uh, the, these, neg these people neglected kids for six and eight hours at a time without feeding them, without changing them. And then they came in and dolled them up just before the mothers came to get them. So they looked great. Well, the mothers thought the kids had had a good day. The kids had had this horrendous day. And we wanted to get that on national TV because we want people to know what they're looking for. And I would say to every one of you guys, if you leave your kids in a daycare center, go over there from time to time and see what's happening. And really check it out, huh? Absolutely. Walk in unannounced. If you find a center that won't let you come except at certain times, be careful. Uh, all right. I, I, a lot of people have said over the years it's really easier to leave a child that is between infants, I, I, the infant age and one year, because as long as they're getting that loving care, they're all right. That's really all they need. You it's disagree. You shake yeah. your head. No, they I need mom. Absolutely. Well, sure. Ideally, every child would have its mother for the first year, but that's not possible for 70 percent of people any longer, who both have to work. But ideally, yes, if a mother could be home for that first year and or a father. A what father. about fathers being, being home? Wonderful. Really? Absolutely Bonding wonderful. with a father and a father as a caregiver is, is enough for a child? Well, there's a study showing that if fathers are involved with their kids uh, through the first year, the child not only ha ends up having a higher IQ and does better in school in first grade, but has a better sense of humor. How about that? Why? <laughs> well, fathers play with their kids more than g women do. Really? You know, You're shaking your head. You agree, Girls look huh? at them and they say, how are you doing, darling? Come on. And the baby goes, ooh. And they say, come on, give me some more. And they get in this sweet, lovely. But a father goes in and he says, how are you doing, kid? And he makes, he makes every child <laughs> hype up. So this is just the difference, sex difference. <laughs> Isn't that great? How about the idea of going back to work? We have moms that have to work, sure. and after six weeks, there they go. You see, and this is the difference. In England, you can get a, a year's, uh, year's parental leave. Wouldn't it be nice if we could get that in this country? Ah, it'd be fantastic. We can't even get three months parental I know. leave. I know. We have a new grassroots organization called Parent Action, and we're going to work to get what parents need, and we need all of you guys to join us. It's, an, a, a, a something in, it's a Washington based, uh, well, advocacy group, and we're going to do what the AARP did for the elderly.
which is lobby well, for one year off? Absolutely. Well, lobby for three months to start with. Three months with. to start with. We'll take that, huh? And if we could get three months for a mother and three months for the father, we'd have the first six months made. I'm wondering how many women avoid even trying breastfeeding because they know they're going back to work. And it's, yeah. it's a real tough schedule, especially for a woman who works eight hours, an hour to work, or 45 minutes to, 45 minutes home. Right. Almost impossible. Well, you breastfed. I did. I but I was lucky. I could get home after okay. the show, so mm -hmm. it was not so tough for me. Well, you can make up your mind to breastfeed and even if you have to go back to work at six weeks you can get breastfeeding and and pump at work and then come home and get that baby to breast at the end of the day and it's so lovely when you get that you baby. talk about it as if you've done it and i know you have that's exactly well it you is can see lovely. i have up here anyway how do you know that it is wonderful it's wonderful for mom too if it works what about things like little he league and all of those i mean those organizations they really do help Teach a woman. Oh. Well, they, they're part, you know, uh, the, the childbirth education group in La Leche led to the women's movement. They were the first real, real cropping out. I, I'm old enough to remember all these things. They really did? <laughs> but, yeah, sure. And the women's movement followed in the wake of that kind of success, that we could change hospitals so they were, they were sensitive to parents. And then, then La Leche came along and showed that women could indeed establish breastfeeding and be successful at it. And then came the women's movement. They were in right along. Let's go back to daycare now. What about preschool for children uh, when they're three and four and they go five days a week or three days a week? What's appropriate? Well, I think it depends too much on the child. You know, a quiet, gentle one like this little boy standing in his mother's uh, right there with his uh, bottle. Now, he may not be this way in a minute, but if you had a quiet child like that, I'd say I'd start slowly and maybe three times a week and then gradually work up to four times a week, dropping out Wednesday. And uh, so you had two days and two days. And then I'd go to five days when he was ready. Kids usually by the second year are ready for group care. This is why the second year is an easier time to begin to separate. They like, like to have peers to play with and so forth. By the third and fourth year, they really need other kids to start learning about themselves and how they are and so forth. And we're going to deal with play in a moment as we get out there and talk to all of you. But I, I really wonder if it's, do we push our children? Are some of those settings, mm -hmm. uh, the hurried child uh, yeah. setting, and they can be. is that bad? Well, it can be. Mm -hmm. If you, it, I would watch that. When I went to find a preschool, I would see if they're trying to teach them their ABCs or teach them something like that. I'd be scared of it because I think what they need to learn about is themselves and learn about other people. And if I would say to you, you as a parent or any of these guys as parents, whatever they go to in the daytime, make it different when they come home. Make it quality time or time for everybody to blow apart and get close together again and just be sure it's different from school. It doesn't need to be school again at night. And, and that brings up routine for children. I mean, I know you're, some of you are shaking your heads. Is routine really critical for a child? Yeah, they need to learn routines. And, uh, but I think if they're learning them at school, they don't need necessarily to learn them at home. Although I think every parent today ought to be taking their kids in the kitchen and letting them learn how to help out. Really? But, Even yeah. the little ones, huh? Little ones, yours. Yeah, to be setting the table, to... stirring things. Uh -huh. yeah. It's fun. They absolutely yeah. love it. They like that better than the expensive toys we buy, don't they? <laughs> it's true. Um, all right, we're back with Dr. T. Barry Brazelton, and we're where I want to be, out here with all of you, the experts, right? And they are the experts, aren't they, Dr. Mm -hmm. Brazelton? I mean, they sure as heck are. <laughs> ask a mother who's had experience, and so. she probably has the answers. Um, we're watching these children play. At what age will we see them play together? Not parallel play, but rather together. Well, uh, they start parallel play about seven or eight months. Did you know that? And watch each other out of the corner of their eye. In the second year, they learn a lot from each other by parallel play. By the third year, watch, they're interacting all over the place. Now, sometimes that interaction results in battles. Oh, yeah. When always. Do you, when, <laughs> okay, always. When do you jump in as a parent? And Never. when do you let them self-resolve? Always. Really? <laughs> Absolutely. The less you can get involved, the better. They are always going to learn more from each other. They're going to learn through you. And every time you step in, you make it a triangle. Now look at these two struggling for this one toy. If anybody comes up here, they're going to upset the balance. Yeah, but this little guy, he's got an unfair advantage. He's a lot bigger than right. she is. But is she's this a brother and sister? Who's the mom here? You're the, here, stand up here. Here's your son. And whose little girl is this? Not your no, little girl. No, no. Your little girl, huh? Okay, now they're battling. Well, look, yes. how, look how she's learning to be dogged. 
She's going to end up being a strong female. Look at her. She's not going to take it. You watching this, Mom, back here? I'm surprised he's so quiet. Usually, he's, you know, just pulling He's really away. pulling yeah. it well. He knows he's well, got a little girl yeah. there. Now, is he an only child? Well, no. One's on the way. Oh. So that's part of my question. Go ahead. Is siblings, you know, do you have any advice on how to ease them? He knows that we're expecting one. Sure he does. But, you know, it's he, the baby's due in September, so... Yeah, Any suggestions? I, sure, I'd get I'd get him ready by talking about how it's going to happen when you get really bigger. I wouldn't do it all the time now. No, we don't really talk and a lot about it. And then let him listen to you know get a stethoscope and let him listen. Oh yeah, to he the comes baby. with me to the doctor. So. Does he? Yes. All right, what are you worried about? Jealousy? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. And then bring something special home to him, either a baby yeah. or a truck or something that he can play with while you play with yours, mm -hmm. and be sure he understands that. You got to be free for her right now, but you're coming back to him later, and then do go back to him later. And I'd start saving a special time for him every week when that's his, and that you can talk about all week long, and say we're going to have our special time, and then go off with him and do something every week. Oh, that's okay. that's important, huh? What about parents who won't leave the older child in the room with the younger child for fear the older child will act out? On the well, child. I've never really heard of a child hurting another child when the parent wasn't nearby. Okay. It, I think the older child begins to protect, just like that little boy was protecting this little girl, uh, they take a protective role when a parent's not nearby. Who else has a, a question here? There you go. Want to stand up for me? Oh, ne never mind, never okay. mind. <laughs> That's your hands full. Um, it's about her beating up her little brother you know when do you draw the line you can't you don't want to hit her to if he, she's hitting him and how do you tell them not to how do you reprimand them when they're hitting you don't know do you no. I don't either <laughs> honestly you don't know really no you know who's right she's probably a much bigger itch than he than he can stand and so she's after him and he finally ends up whamming her she's the older one, oh, she's the older. well vice versa then so how do you know which is right you don't so it, the truth is, let them settle it for themselves, and they're a lot better off. They learn a lot more about yeah, each other. Yeah, but with one draws blood. They don't. They not, don't. Not very often. All right. Well, I don't know. I've got a scar only... from a knockout bench on my head that my brother threw at me. Well, I'll bet because your mother was standing nearby. <laughs> I don't know. Let's take a call. Good morning. You're on Good Day. Hi. Hi. My, go right ahead. My name is Barbara Harrington from Malden. I'm a fan of Dr. Brazelton. I have a very big problem. Wait, Barbara, before you tell me, Jimmy, can we have more audio? Because we can't hear. Go ahead, Barbara. I have a very, very big problem. It's tormenting me. Go ahead. Um, my son is 15 months old. I'm consistent when he's in danger uh, as far as discipline goes. But my, fa my husband and my father accuse me of not disciplining him enough, and he'll grow up to be a brat. He has a temper when he cries, and he's anger, angry when he doesn't get his way, and he wants to be held a lot by me, and I don't, I don't think that's wrong. Uh, however, I am under a lot of pressure here because they keep insisting that he's going to be a brat um, because I don't discipline him. Well, first of all, I think they ought to handle him their way, and you ought to handle him your way because this in-between is what's got him fired up. Discipline is a long-term process. It takes most of your life and it means teaching. And we're, you're teaching him every episode how eventually he can discipline himself. But what you do at each, at each episode is really not that critical. My idea of discipline is stop the, the building up behavior, sit down with him and say, I'm sorry, but you can't do that. Every time you do it, I have to stop you. And eventually, he'll learn to stop himself. You'll get involved. Who's had a trying two or three year old experience? Oh, I, well, I wanted to ask about no mine. My 22-month-old favorite words. No. No, mine. She's over there now, and she'll grab a toy from someone else. No, mine. And I don't know how I should respond. Should I ignore it? Should I tell her that she learned she has to share? What's the best? Yeah, it'd be nice, but it won't work. <laughs> so, uh, you know, but that's the whole issue. At that age where they're pro trying to separate, if you, uh, if you don't acknowledge that behavior, are you setting up lifelong patterns? No. Are these ages and phases that will pass? Sure. And you know, this 15-month-old that's struggling right now is a normal kind of struggle. I, I think the issues are between the two parents, and they're having more trouble figuring out each other than they are the child. So I would sit back and work that out together rather but than... See, now, is this your little girl right here in the print dress? I know you 
my You finger. like the words no and mine, huh? Down there and I'll See, knock she's on holding on to her toy. Dr. Brazelton? Yeah. What about the no, mine? Is Good that... for her, is all I can say. <laughs> really? <laughs> it is hers. She has to fight to keep it. These guys are in their boxes. They want me to knock. Oh, do they? Uh, are you there? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, how about sharing? Can you force a child to share? When do you say you must share, or do you? Well, sure you say it, but uh, also other kids make them share. They learn to share quickly. The, it, another child comes up to her and takes that away, she'll fight for it, and then she'll learn she really has to share. And what you do is just reinforce it. Stay out. Stay oh, out look at it. this one. <laughs> really a lot easier. She's taking over. Okay, who here has a question? You do? All right. Go what ahead. would you suggest for a baby? Alana's eight weeks. She fights taking a nap. She's up for six, seven hours at a time. Uh, I'd put her in just the same and, and rock her or calm her down because it's awful hard on everybody. I bet what she does is fight taking a nap and then blow at the end of the day and have a fuss period at the end of every day. Right. And everybody calls it colic, don't right. they? Right, but I don't think it is. It isn't, she's no. It's just blowing off all that steam that she's built up all through the the subsequent, you know, the preceding eight hours. Uh -huh. So you're bound to have that, and then she'll sleep after that. So let, you know, you sort of have to follow her. But you really recommend rocking? Don't you set yourself up sure. for rocking until they're seven and go to their first sleepover? <laughs> <laughs> I'm in that situation now. Well, maybe they can go to the right sleepover and get rocked there too. <laughs> I asked a doctor, okay, when's he going to stop crawling into our bed? And the doctor oh. said the first time he goes and sleeps over at somebody's house, but it's a long I asked, time. I asked a Japanese boy, a uh, young man that was working with us, because in Japan, the mother sleeps with all of her kids, and the father sleeps in another part of the house. But <laughs> oh. anyway, I said, when did you stop sleeping with your mother? You know, I wanted to hear him say, right, oh, when I was three or four. He said, I can't remember. And I said, well, just guess. Well, six or seven. And I said, oh, so then you went to your own room. He said, no, then I went to my grandmother's bed. <laughs> now, but what about sleep issues? Who, else, who here has a question about sleep other than for little Robin over there? All right, wait a minute. I'm going to have a hard time getting to you, but I'm going to try. Here we go. Go ahead. Hi. Um, can you stand up so we can see you and see your beautiful baby? She just lost her shoes. Oh, that's all right. <laughs> She's been taking them on and off. She still doesn't sleep through the night, and I'm an exhausted mother of three, and we're presently going to move. So when she gets her own room, I didn't know if I should start her right off on the right, or give her some time mm -hmm. because of the move. Or well, you better do things frame. gradually, but does she know how to get to sleep in the first place, or do you put her to sleep in your arms? That's the well, biggest we're crowded, mistake. and I can't, in the middle of the night, have my son who's 10 be awoken all the time. And well, when you get to the new house and she has a room, then I'd start to teach her how to get herself to sleep in the first place. Because every child wakes up every three to four hours to light sleep, and unless they have their own pattern to get themselves back down, she'll never sleep more than four hours at a time. Do you agree with Dr. Ferber at the sleep mm -hmm. clinic that five minutes of crying extended to 10, then 15, yeah. or whatever your gut says is all right? Yeah, I do, the way and to it's do a it? very good book. It teaches you how to do this over time. That the only thing uh, that I would add to what he says is that they're usually your issues, and she has an issue that right, won't well, let her. I know the time frame. If I should wait a good month into the house so it's not all new, and then mom's being, you'll go to sleep now in the well, new house. Sure, I'd, I'd judge it that way, but I'd also begin to show her how to get to sleep. And that means you're going to have to put her down after you've nursed her. Are you nursing? Yes. Yeah, I thought you were. You, you look like it. <laughs> Excuse me. And she looks like it. She's so grabby. But <laughs> after you, uh, after you put her, nurse, get her quiet, but not asleep, and then put her down and sit there and pat her and say, "You can do it yourself. You can do it." I'd love yourself. it. And I'm wondering will. how many of you moms at home are saying, "I gotta turn on Sesame Street because this sounds like my house." Uh. <laughs> yeah. We have a lot of noise here, but we're we're into answers, Which so we'll take your phone calls and we'll take a break. We'll be right back. Are you the big sister? Mm -hmm. Are you? What's your name? Caitlin. What is it? Caitlin. Caitlin. And where's your baby? Big brother's in school. Oh, oh, big brother. Okay. Do these two fight? Do you have sibling rivalry? Not too often. When they were little, once in a while, he liked her binky better than she did, and uh -oh. we hung them on the Christmas tree as their first ornaments. <laughs> <laughs> I thought they were going to college with them. 
<laughs> but they didn't. No, huh? we were lucky. <laughs> Good for you. Okay, who has questions here? Let's get the moms involved. You do? Yes. Go ahead. Hi, Dr. Brazelton. My daughter just turned four, and recently she has been ignoring us at every turn. Whether we're asking a question or asking her to do something, she constantly ignores us, and it's really become an issue in our house. Um, I'm going through the same thing. They just don't seem to hear you? Yeah. Right, absolutely. This is part of her becoming independent. If she heard you and conformed to everything you did, I'd worry like hell about her. <laughs> a three and four year old ought to be, be becoming independent. And they also go through something that's really fascinating. They turn to one parent and absolutely ignore the other. And if you think about that, it's part of the Oedipus, you know, that they're trying to learn everything can, they can about that one parent and be and pick up what they want from that parent, and it's economical. They have to turn their back on the other one. And so this is all part of the struggle of becoming your own person, becoming the kind of person you want to be, and ignoring you is a very critical part of that. And will children find their feet even in this circumstance? I mean, do you have oh, to worry yeah. that she will never listen to you as I long do as... Worry yeah, about it, right? See, yeah, that's sure you do. <laughs> but uh, the truth is that this is just a phase, three to six. And it, but it's exactly like adolescence. So you're getting a good okay. chance at no, practicing boy, I practice. for adolescence. Because uh, <laughs> it'll right. all happen again. Here, let me see. Can, okay, good. You're right here in the front row. Let me sit down next to you. Go ahead. Hi. Um, we're getting ready to move to Toronto, and we have a ten and a half month old. And She's we're trying to climbing away. Climbing the stairs back there. <laughs> and we have two things going on. We want to make sure the transition is smooth for her. And also, I'm going back to work full time, and Dad's taking over full time care at home. So we have two, a lot of big changes for the baby coming up. What's the best way to uh, Ooh, prepare her for that? Oh, I think that's a wonderful change, though, to have father there and really participating and so forth. The only real change is the move. Mm -hmm. And that's probably upsetting you more than it is her. <laughs> Packing. It, it, when you move somewhere, be sure you take her lovies with you. Don't leave them for the packers, because they won't get there. And that's what she needs. If you've got her lovies with you, you can move her. She won't matter. Are lovies won't really matter. important, even with sleep issues? Oh, absolutely. That's what you do. That's what I was recommending to this lady, that if she taught this child to rely on something like a lovey, like a thumb, or rocking, or anything like that, it makes it so easy to come up to light sleep and get back down again every three to four hours. And the same thing with a move. Having your lovey and your parents there is all you really need. Let's take a call. Good morning. You're on Good Day. Hi. Hi. Go right ahead. Okay. Uh, my name is Jana from Quincy, and I have two little girls. One's four and a half and one's nine months. And my problem is, um, unlike my first daughter, my second daughter is very clingy and won't go to anyone and doesn't want to be left alone. And I'm faced with a problem because this weekend I have to go to um, my first daughter's recital and I have to leave the little one alone with somebody. Um, how can I make it easier for her or easier for her? And I haven't heard a thing you said. Did you hear that? Talk yeah, I think I did. The younger child is very clingy and, the, and she has to go to a recital with the older child. I'd start giving it partly it's your problem that you play into it and it's very hard for you to leave this younger child. So go ahead and start practicing. Tell her, I'm going to leave you for 10 minutes this afternoon and leave her with the person that you're going to leave her with this weekend, and I'll be back in 10 minutes. And when she screams her head off, which she'll do, then when you get back, say, see, I'm here. Remember, and I know it's hard for you. Then the next day, make it an hour. Then the next day, make it two hours and get her used to your leaving. Now, she's not going to like it if she's got any spunk at all, and it sounds like she does, but you've got to learn how to leave her. That's what it sounds like. You know, like. there's some videotapes that are really terrific if you don't use them as babysitters. One is baby songs. Huh. I don't know if any of you have it. You know that song, Mommy Always Comes Back? That really helped my little guy. Really? The message. Yeah, you have a question. Uh, yes, doctor. My four-year-old has recently begun to demand the light on at night, and he never even needed a light on. And yeah. all of a sudden, he has to have a light on, and he won't sleep without it. So we wait till he's asleep and we shut it off, but if he wakes up screaming, we have to put it back on again. I was wondering well, how I break him of that. Well, first of all, forget, use the light. Why not? This little boy is so masculine and so cute and so really with it that what he's going through is a normal phase of a four-year-old's development, which is he's learning how to feel aggressive. And as he gets more aggressive, he's going to have fears to balance that. Fears and aggression go right along together. And the fears will come up at night. And if he's got the night light and that settles him, you're lucky. But he's going to get to the next stage, which is I want you to come in and see if there's a witch under my bed <laughs> or a ghost in my closet. Go in and say, no, let's look together. 
It's not here, but I know why you're upset. And why he's upset is that he's trying to learn about himself in the daytime. He and this other little boy were having the best battle down here. And you know, that's what you want. You want a kid that's feisty. So he's bound to have Look fears at this at one night. eating the microphone here. <laughs> you can't do that. But mommy, you have a question? Yes, about discipline. Every time I say don't touch something, he'll look right at me and do whatever I say. And what do I do not to go crazy? <laughs> well, d stop saying don't touch something so often. Save it for important things. Otherwise, you spend your whole day. I don't have many things around the house that he can't touch, but there are maybe one or two. Well, you can get rid of those if get... you can. But if you can't, then make them very definite. And every time he does it, do the same thing. And so consistency? Him, absolutely. Isolation, timeout, whatever works. But, and I don't believe in physical punishment. What, what do you think about um, putting him in a crib? Yep, if absolutely. Does. Anything that works. And then when it's over, don't wait. Don't take five minutes or ten minutes or anything like that. But go pick him up and say, I'm sorry, but every time you do that, we have to do that. Now, I'd limit that to as few things as you possibly can because it's a lot more fun for him to keep teasing you and having you say, don't, don't, don't. So you could spend your day doing that. We have a pint-sized question for oh. you. She feeds you have a what? Me Wait, start at the beginning. A, I have a babysitter, and she feeds me lunch. You like, do you like what she makes you for lunch? Do you like it? Now, oh, that's it. <laughs> that's all we get. <laughs> that is wonderful. <laughs> all right, simply. she's gonna be an Eileen Pros, you know. Yeah, <laughs> she's had it for Not stardom. A year. She can have the job. No, okay, go ahead. I have two boys. Uh, they are two years, eight months apart. The older one being five. Is he ever going to like his little brother? No. Well, I liked mine when I was fifty. It, yeah. it was almost too late. <laughs> but uh, he'll like them if you stay out of it. Sibling rivalry is one side of a coin. The other side is learning to care about that sibling. So as long as you make it an issue between them, you know, trying to settle things, all that, you're really not t stripping them of the chance to learn about each other. So every time they can work something out together, they learn about each other and they learn to care. When you have when it gets physical between them. Because the little one, I kind of have to defend him because he's still young yet. Why? How young? Uh, two years, eight months. He's not too young. Let him learn to be tough. He'll learn yeah. to be tough as nails if you stay out of it. <laughs> okay. It's hard though, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. it's really, you're taught to protect your children. There they are beating up on each other. It goes against all of your instincts, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. And you think, oh gosh, am I engendering aggressive kids? No, the answer is no. Learning about aggression in the first five years Gives, gives a child a secure base so they don't have to be aggressive. What are so you doing? You running around really having think. a good time? Go ahead. Dr. Brazelton, I think I made a mistake in starting with a pacifier, and I'd like to get her away from a pacifier. She's 11 weeks old. Is it too early to start to get her to suck her thumb, which she's beginning on her own now? Sure. Could I just remove it without causing permanent yeah. trauma? And, but when you remove it, show her she can get to her thumb. I sort of help her put it in and she will pull it out, but when she's calm, she puts it in on her, by herself. When Wonderful. she's upset, well, nothing just, works. Well, before she gets upset, show her she can get to her thumb and see if you can't break through it. But what about thumb sucking? I thought that, was, I thought that wasn't good for a child. Oh, it's the best thing in the world a child can learn, short of masturbation. It's better than the pacifier. <laughs> because she and don't has... think people don't think they go together. <laughs> As they do. I want her to have her own self-calming mechanism because, as you said, when right. they come to light sleep at night, I have to get up and run in because if the pacifier isn't there, which it isn't, because once she's gone to sleep, she's Well, you she can tie it, it around her sure. wrist. You Take can. a ribbon and tie it around her wrist so she can find either her thumb or the pacifier. Oh, all pacifier. right. But all I agree right. with you. you. I would rather see a child sucking its yes. thumb and being independent than sucking a plug, which is what the way I see it. I'll come back to you. Hang on a second. You have a question here? Go ahead. Um, I do something that a lot of the people I know think is terrible. My kids are one and two, and I let them fall asleep in front of the TV on the floor. And it doesn't bother me, but it seems to bother a whole lot of other yeah. people. It does me too. Why? <laughs> well, I think TV ought to be safe for learning or for very special occasions, but not, to, not as a babysitter or as a way of calming down. It's not a calming influence. It's a very stimulating influence. We, everything we know about television shows that Children get very hyped up from watching it. Get, they begin to imitate and begin to sh shape on, on visual images like that. And I think bedtime and going to sleep ought to be a calming, 
break through the day. Have you ever thought of maybe taking them in and reading them a book? Would a, reading a book be a better, Much calming? Better. They and don't sit still. The only time they calm down is in front of the TV. Well, but I think maybe you've engendered this, so I begin now to pull away. And I, Eileen is right, having an interpersonal chance is so much more critical in the long run. Uh -huh. And you're really cheating yourself and them by not putting yourself in there instead of them. You may have to teach them now. I but you know you what? Would. I mean, in her defense, don't we sometimes, when we find an easy way, we stick to it? Sure. Even though maybe in our gut we know this might oh, not yeah. be right. Everybody's huh? doing that. You know, by, by the time you've finished high school in this country, you've watched four times as much television as you spent in school. Yeah, and, which is four uh, times so more than you should watch, doing right? That. Okay. But it ought to be restricted and it ought to be an interpersonal thing. I, I would cut television down to one hour a day for small children and half of that ought to be spent with you right there to share the experience. I so. want to know how many of you are taping the show so you can save your babies. <laughs> I, yeah, I figured most of you. Go ahead. My son is 19 months old and he's very attached to a bottle. He likes to go to sleep with it, which I know is really bad for his teeth. How do I get him onto a lovey to, you know, something else? Well, first of all, uh, you, you do have other things beside milk in there. I wouldn't have milk or sugar in his bottle when he goes to sleep. That'll wreck his teeth. Mm -hmm. You know those people on the subway that have black teeth? That's, they had a bottle in bed with them. So don't do that. But uh, you, he, there's no reason not to take the bottle as a lovey if it has just water in it. And then at the point where it's really getting to be obtrusive, tie it to a lovey. Get a lovey and tie the bottle and the lovey together and get them used to both and then start making a bargain with him. Now, during the day, take your lovey and you'll have your bottle at nap and night and then finally, now you'll have your bottle just at night and then finally you'll have your lovey. Yeah, and slow, gradually, slow withdrawal, huh? Uh -huh. Might help? <laughs> it is. Okay. It's, it's learning how to withdraw later on. Yeah, <laughs> okay, come here. You got one? Go ahead. Yeah, um, we're having a baby in September and my son will be 22 months. And we've bought a junior bed for him, and the new baby will be in a bassinet for three months, and I'm wondering how long I can wait before I put him in the junior bed without him feeling as though he's being kicked out of his crib. Gee, you know, I almost wouldn't put him in a junior bed until he's uh, a lot older and get another crib for the new baby. I think it's very hard. The second you put a child his age into a bed, you're saying it's okay to run around the house or it's okay to get out of, and you have to make their room their bed. So why not keep him in his bed through this big adjustment, and then when he's three or four or something like that, then use the bed as a really exciting new move, and then he can make, make it a lot more, not more easily. It's really not a good time to switch him to a big bed. All right, I don't know who's been holding all this time, but let's take your call. Good morning. Hi, um, this is Dolores from Quincy. Hi, um, Dolores. I have three children, um, a daughter age 10, a son age 3, and a brand new four-week-old baby girl. <laughs> my <laughs> hands full. <laughs> yeah. My question is, how can I get my 10-year-old daughter to be more involved with the baby? Um, my 3-year-old son feeds it, burps it, wants mm -hmm. put can't help out enough, but my, my 10 year old daughter doesn't seem to want to be involved. Is this, um, could there be some jealousy there? I realize sure. there's 10 years difference between her and the baby, but three year old helps out uncontrollably. He can't right. wait to help out. Okay. Well, I think the three year old is doing what you want, and the 10 year old is probably reacting to the three year old's desertion. So you've just got to stay out of it. The more you care and let her see that you care, the more you're going to turn her off. So rather so, than saying something about yeah. it, just let it go? Just let so. it go and let her. Well, she's probably watching you out of the corner of her eye and learning how to nurture, which is what you want. And at a certain point, give her some responsibility. If she wants a new toy or something, say, mm -hmm. you could do some babysitting and make some money and get that mm -hmm. toy. Yeah. And uh, then leave her for a short time with the baby to babysit and feel responsible by herself and let her get to, used to it that way. But if you push her, she'll never do it. Questions, questions, and more questions. Go ahead, stand up for me, can you? Hi, this is my daughter, Suzanne, Dr. Browselton. She's 20 months old and really starting to show some interest in the potty, but not sure at what age she'd really understand what that's all about and when I should start any kind of training. Yeah, I'm thrilled you've held off this long because <laughs> two is the best time for me. You know, when, you know what we're asking them to do when we ask them to get potty trained? We're asking them to feel it coming on, 
hang on to it, get where we tell them to go, <laughs> sit down, do it, and then watch it disappear for the rest of their lives. <laughs> How would you ask a child to do that until they can understand speech, un get over the excitement of walking, you know, be ready to sit down, be ready to understand that that's what everybody else in the world does. Now, this is a girl. I, let's go. Let's do the difference in, in young, excuse me, young little girls and young little boys. Are boys ready at a later age? They're likely to be slower than girls picking up these. I don't know whether it's rebellion or whether they... Little boys seem to worry a lot about giving up their BMs, as if Freud, as if Freud was really right. You know, maybe they're going to lose it, and so they don't dare give them up. And lots of little boys won't give, won't go for their BMs, and will go for their urine. And those kids got to be respected. It takes time, and if you leave it to kids to lead you each in each step, it's so simple, and it becomes theirs. They're so thrilled with it. What, One about, of our what about rewards like stickers or, mm -hmm. I know a woman who taped matchbox cars to the wall of the powder room and took one off each time as a reward. Well, I think that's taking away the excitement from the child. One of ours finally trained herself. She was the third daughter and it took her a long time. And when she finally trained herself, she'd save everything she did all day long. And when I got home at night, we'd measure it, <laughs> we'd count it, and she'd stand there looking like this, like, that's isn't love, that That's love, that's <laughs> love. You so know, there's a new product. That's better we just, than matchboxes. <laughs> <laughs> we were just talking about Huggies pull-ups, yep. this great new invention that are diapers, but you pull them on and you pull them down. Kids can. They're only available, I think, Walgreens, and now someone said Toys R Us. Is that a good idea? Because this just makes common sense. If they can get them off, they can oh, get potty. Yeah. At the point where they really want to do it, and that's a, about the fourth step in my, my step, uh, you show them how to pull these down and then turn it over to them. Put the pot out in the yard with them or in their playroom and say, now try it for two hours mm -hmm. and let them go and do all of it themselves. And then they're done. They, they make a mess, they make a mess, right? Yeah. They're learning. Okay, here's a question. You do, standing here with your... Your little one. Oh, look at this, how old. She's 18 days old. Oh. Isn't that wonderful? She's so nice. I love that kangaroo method, too. That's what is called kangaroo. You carry them between your breasts on your chest, and it, it gives them support, you know, and they, they don't fly off the handle all the time. And look at little brother in here kissing and hugging. Is this your baby sister? Huh? <laughs> Sweetie? Nicholas. Sweetie? Nicholas, is this your baby sister? You love her? Yes. Yeah, you take care of her? Mm -hmm. Oh, you're a big but helper, he huh? He won't change diapers, though. That's oh, well, come on. <laughs> uh, my question is about the five-year-old. He's coming home with new peers, new behaviors, new language. Mm, yep. I'm trying not to interfere, but I don't know where the line is there. Well, interfere as little as you can. He'll learn so much more about his peers, and even if he picks up dirty words, all sorts of uh, <laughs> other activities, it's uh, really important for him to have a chance to explore other kids, learn what, what works for him and what doesn't. And you'll find he, he'll run through different things, but he'll go out at the other end. Yeah, but it's all right to say that's inappropriate yeah, or, or make say, up other funny words to replace yeah. them or something like that, isn't oh, it? Oh, yeah, sure it is. And, and you say you can't say that here. You can say it outside or you can say it with your friends. but. Yeah, you set limits on it, but hmm. I wouldn't interfere with his making peer relationships. It's really critical. Okay. Hi. Um, she's a very active child, Hi, but sweet. she goes to bed crying, wakes up in the middle of the night crying when she's teething. She wakes up in the morning crying. If I put her in for a nap, she gets up crying. She's mm -hmm. always crying, never gets up talking or babbling like most babies or... Mm -hmm happy is it because she doesn't like to sleep it, or she's real active i, I don't know well i think why. it's her pattern of of coming up in a hurry from zip sleep to screaming and a lot of kids are like that one thing i would do is when she wakes up like that just go in and start comforting her and show her how to pull herself down from crying to become independently alert and over time you'll teach her how to do that and that'll be the biggest asset to her she's probably always going to wake up grumpy and angry and you know kick her husband out of bed and things like that <laughs> so you better teach her some mild ways of doing this is that one of the most important things we can do for our children hold them even when they're having a temper oh, yeah. tantrum or something just yeah and the other thing is respect them for what they are you know this child she told us this is an active child so when she gets active she probably goes like that and if you respect them you don't make them feel guilty about the way they are yeah, important, huh? Okay, go ahead. I have a six-year-old and a three-year-old at home, and the six-year-old has a little friend in the backyard that we're not a little, uh, not too pleased with, and 
The friend throws dirt on the three-year-old. On the three-year-old. How do we teach the six-year-old to be, don't do that. We've, we're having a problem with him not stopping the child. Not stopping the other the child? The other child. He's not doing it, my son. Well, I'd talk to him about it and ask him. By that age, I would always ask a child, how can I help you so you can protect your little brother or your little sister and uh, stop this other child because that hurts. And ask him how, how you can help him help do it. I wonder how many of you have a neighborhood child or a friend who has a child that just doesn't behave when they come to your house and you don't know how to handle it. Yeah, and can you impose your own discipline? I mean, presuming we're not spanking, but can you impose time out for the other child? Is that fair to sure. do? Yeah, and I talk to the other mother and say, I'm going to do this because it doesn't work at our house. And uh, so I still want him to come, and I like your kid, but this is the way it works at our house. So keep the consistency of your rules yeah. and your boundaries, even well, when Well, I think it's critical to your kids to do that. And I think also that these other kids will learn a lot from coming to your house. Who's holding on the line? Good morning. Hello. Hello. Go right ahead. Hi. Uh, my name is Erin. I'm calling from Wareham. Uh, my problem is I have a five-week-old uh, daughter, and I'm um, breastfeeding. Uh, she won't accept a breast milk bottle that I've pumped from anyone, uh, her father, her grandparents, me, etc. Um, I'm wondering if we should keep trying to get her to take the bottle or wait a few weeks and try again. No, don't wait. No, of course she won't. She smells you and smells the... They're making a perfume in Philadelphia now for men to wear that smells like women's breast milk. <laughs> That's going to settle it. <laughs> Why? So that daddy well, can hold the baby? Because a baby will learn its mother's smell and won't take a bottle. Yeah, but every mother's smell, else. we would presume, is different. Well, that's right. So you, the man has to take the breast milk, put it on himself, and, <laughs> and then the baby will take it from you. But also, she has to get out of the house. If that baby hears her voice oh, yeah. or smells anything about her, he won't take, the, won't take it from the father or the grandmother. Yeah, I didn't hear your name. Tell me your name again, caller. My, my name is Erin. Erin, I'm uh -huh. wondering if you hear the baby cry, does your milk come in? Excuse me? If you hear the baby cry because they're refusing the bottle or whatever, does your milk come in? Oh, yes. <laughs> so the baby presumably even senses that. Is that you right? You know, I can make a nursing mother let down milk by just taking your baby and putting it up here on my shoulder. And the baby nestles and puts its little head right down in there. And the mother's milk goes... So all... <laughs> All of, your, all of your clients, your patients, wear breast pads, I bet, to the office. Anybody, you have a question? My question is about imaginary friends. My son all of a sudden has seen somebody in the house, a little boy. He tells me there's a little boy in the house, and he'll point to it, and I can't see him. And he'll walk right over to an empty space and say, here, Mama, what do I do? Love it. Absolutely yeah. love it. It is the most wonderful phase of development in the world, and it only happens to first children because the second and third children won't let them. But uh, my grandson, who's five now, has two imaginary friends. One is uh, one that tells him what not to do. But even if I do it, Papa, he stays with me. Don't and call the, the Ghostbusters. And the other, right. one okay. says, the other one tells him, now, every time your mother gets upset and starts screaming at you, act like you're listening, but just close your ears and your eyes. <laughs> All this noise. All right. Thank you so much, Dr. Brazelton. Good to see you. Thank and you, thank Ellie. you, all of you. Your children are wonderful. Thanks, callers. To Tomorrow, uh, pet expert Brian.